In one of the early videos in this series, I expressed some of my convictions about the nature of apologetics. And one of the things that I said about apologetics is that apologetics is contextual. It's, a, it's contextual. Apologetics requires that we learn to listen to the question that a skeptic is asking, understanding the nature of that question and responding in an appropriate way, a way that they would understand. So apologetics is about responding appropriately to skeptics, learning to listen and communicate well. And that's what I want to talk about uh, in more detail in this final session. I want to talk about ways that we understand our culture and ways that we can more effectively communicate and engage our culture. In 1 Corinthians 9, 22, Paul shares with us his own approach towards um, spreading the name of Jesus in a culture. And he says, very simply, he says, I have become all things to all people so that by any possible means I might save some. I become all things to all people. Paul was very passionate about translating the gospel in ways that would be understood by his culture. Because his purpose, his purpose was that by any means necessary, I might win some. So apologetics requires, and evangelism, frankly, requires speaking the language of culture. And I want to, I want to talk about if we're going to speak the language of culture, we have to kind of understand what culture is. What is culture anyway? What are we referring to when we talk about culture? And I want to give you a couple different definitions of what culture is. First of all, culture is the cultivation of the earth and expression of the Imago Dei. Culture is man's and women's cultivation of the earth as an expression of being created in the image of God. God created us in his image to be creative, to take care of this world, to be fruitful and to multiply, to make something of this world. The making something of this world is culture. Culture is what we make of this world. It's our creative work. Um, this is a quote from an author named Andy Crouch who wrote a really good book on culture. He says, culture is what we make of the world. It is, first of all, the name of our relentless, restless human effort to take the world as it's given to us and to make something else. This is the original insight of the writer of Genesis when he says that human beings were made in God's image just like the original creator. We are creators. We are creators. So culture is what we make of the world. But secondly, culture is the concrete expression of abstract ideas or values of a particular group of people. So culture is how we express those, those ideas or values that we have. Here's a great example of this. When a young man falls in love with a young woman, what we might do in our culture to express this abstract feeling of love is we might go and purchase a, a, a bunch of dead plants. So we, we go and we buy these colorful dead plants and we present them to the young woman. And the young woman, she sees these flowers and she sees them not just as a bunch of dead plants. She sees them as articulating an idea, a value. The idea is, I kind of like you. I want to express how I feel about you in a concrete way by offering you flowers. That's what culture is. Culture is what we create in order to express the values that we have. Now, what that means for me as a Christian is I can learn a lot about the people that I'm trying to reach with the gospel by learning to read their culture. What are they producing? What are they making? Because what they produce and what they make it is the expression of those sometimes hidden values and hidden desires of a group of people. The second question that we've got to ask of culture is not just what is culture, but what does culture do? What does culture do? And culture, culture does several different things. First of all, as I've been saying, culture communicates. It communicates. It tells us something 
about the values and the beliefs, the priorities of a group of people. If you want to learn about a group of people, you need to learn how to read their culture, how to respond ef effectively and appropriately to their culture, because culture communicates something about a group of people. Um, one of the examples that I like to give for this is in the United States, we have um, the interstate highway system, right? We love being on the interstate. What, what, does the, what does the interstate highway system, though, say about us? What does it say about what we value? Well, it says several different things. It says that we value independence. We value efficiency. We value speed. We value the ability to go from point A to point B on our own timeline whenever we want to, how we want. To. Like an interstate highway system is not just an interstate. It's actually teaching us something about what we value. It's teaching us something about what's important to us. And so, if you again, if you want to respond appropriately to culture, you have to learn to see what culture is communicating. Second of all, culture orients us. We know, we know how pervasive culture is when we find ourselves outside of our home culture. We feel all out of sorts. We feel alienated. We feel just kind of disoriented because all those normal things about our culture have been removed. The language is different. The food is different. The, 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 the the travel and transportation is different. Everything is different. Everything has changed and it leaves us feeling disoriented. Culture is a way of making us feel at home. It orients us. Number three, culture reproduces. Culture reproduces. Culture is viral in this way. Culture spreads from one group to another. It reproduces. Um, and, and, and so we've got to pay attention to what ideas are being reproduced, which ones are being spread widely, even beyond a particular group of people. And then lastly, culture cultivates. Culture turns us into particular people. Culture shapes us. We don't just create culture. Culture in some ways also creates us. So if I'm a Christian trying to reach a particular culture, I've got to pay attention to all of these points. I've got to see what culture is communicating. I've got to see how culture is orientating people, making them feel at home, how culture is being reproduced and spread, what culture is being reproduced and spread. And also I've got to pay attention to what type of people are being created by this culture. So these are all things that culture does. So we know what culture is. We know what culture does. Now here's the important question though. What am I as a Christian to do about culture? What posture do I adopt as a Christian in this world? And, you know, there's several different ways that, um, that Christians have chosen to engage culture. One way that Christians engage culture is with hostility. We put our fists up and we're ready to fight tooth and nail. Every chance that we get, we're just ready to fight it out with culture. We're ready to fight it out with the world. So we adopt this posture, this hostile culture, this hostile posture. We're ready to fight with culture. We want to be distinct. We want to be different. We want to fight. Um, and this is this is the the roots of sometimes you hear people talk about the culture wars. Culture wars are really born out of a hostile posture towards culture. On the other end of that spectrum, you have some people that are more interested in accommodating culture. I want to blend into culture. I want to look, act, and think much like culture. Um, I want to be as indistinct as possible within this wider culture. Now, there's a third approach, which is to isolate ourselves from culture, to live in a bunker, to build our walls high, to dig our bunkers deep, to be as isolated from culture as possible. Now, I want to say each one of these approaches is appropriate in its time. There are certain things in our culture where we are certainly justified in being hostile towards these things. We, should, we are justified in being hostile towards things like the pornography epidemic, 
the global sex trade. We, we can go on and on down that list. There are certain things in our culture that I would say as a Christian, yeah, you better be hostile towards these things. Um, but I don't know if that works as a posture where we, we automatically have the posture of hostility towards everything in this culture. There are also things in our culture where accommodation actually makes sense. Even the, the, the verse that I read from Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, he's talking about a rather accommodating approach. I became all things to all people so that I might win some. And that's the last part there is what's important. He didn't say I became all things to all people so that it would be easy for me. He didn't say I became all things to all people so that I might be cool or relevant or with it or whatever. He says I became all things to all people because I had a higher purpose in mind. That purpose was to lead people to Jesus. There's also times where it's appropriate to be isolated from culture, to remove ourselves from culture, especially for the purpose of holiness, for the, for the purpose of being built up in the faith. There are certain times where it is appropriate for us to be isolated. But again, as a posture, I don't think that isolation is appropriate or even possible for us as Christians. I think the proper posture of a Christian towards culture is found in the book of 1 Peter in chapter 2 of 1 Peter, where Peter says, we are a royal priesthood. We're a royal priesthood. Now let's break that down a little bit. What does it mean to be a royal priesthood? Well, what that means is if you're a royal priest, it means that you exist primarily and principally in service of the king. That you are in uh, the king's employ. You, you, you work for the king. You're a royal priesthood, okay? Um, but what does it mean to be a priesthood? Well, a priest, a good priest, is someone who has their feet planted in two different worlds. A priest, the job of a priest is to bridge the gap that exists between God and people. That's what a priest does. So in order to be a, an effective priest, you have to be distinct from people. You have to, there has to be something different about you. And in the same passage of scripture, Peter says, you know what? You're like aliens and strangers in this world. You may try to blend in as much as possible, but you're going to stick out. You're going to be different. You're going to be distinct. And as priests, we should be distinct. There should be something compelling and different about us. Because if we're going to connect people to God, then, then that has to be the case. There has to be something different about us. But at the same time, we have to have one foot also planted in this world. A good priest has to be a bridge in that way. And so we have to be able to speak the language of culture, understand the language of culture, interact faithfully with culture in order, again, to come back to Paul's word, so that we might win some. And so we have to be both distinct and engaged. Distinct and engaged. We, we, um, we live out this call to be royal priesthood, to be a royal priesthood when we're distinct from this culture, but we also are, we're listening to the culture. We speak the language of culture. We're engaged with the culture. Now, so that's the first thing. We engage culture as a royal priesthood. The second thing, remember, I'm, I'm trying to answer the question, what does a Christian do about culture? The second thing is, we should read culture as ambassadors of Christ. Reading culture, interpreting culture is, I think, it's an act of loving our neighbors. Think about it this way. If you had a neighbor who you wanted to reach for Christ, but this neighbor was from another country, spoke a different language, one of the things that you would have to do if you're going to reach that neighbor is you would have to somehow learn that person's language. You, have to, you would have to learn how to appreciate where that person is coming from. And I would simply argue that that is our experience every day living in this world. We're living right next to people every single day that are living in a very different culture than we are. And if we're going to love them well, we have to at least be able to communicate in their cultural language. We have to understand the cultural world that they're living in if we hope to be a royal priesthood to them. The third thing that Christians do about culture is that we create culture in this world as pilgrims, as, as aliens and strangers in this world. We create culture. Christians should be in the culture-creating business. We create culture that communicates the gospel. We create culture that cultivates us into the likeness of Christ. 
Christians should be on the on the leading edge of creating compelling culture in this world that leads people closer to Jesus. So what do we do about culture? We engage it as a royal priesthood. We learn to read it and understand it as an expression of loving our neighbor. And then thirdly, we create culture. We create compelling culture that leads people closer to Jesus. Jesus.